Hi right, guys, welcome back. This is volume eight of Carmine, that's me, from New York, tries to teach photography. <laughs> okay, so I've gotten a lot of uh, emails from you guys. I really appreciate the questions because I would have never thought of uh, these areas. All right, uh, so let's get right into it. First email. Why so much attention to the camera pressure plate? All right, the pressure plate in the back of the camera. Uh, the reason you want to pay attention to that when you get a new camera, as time goes by with, you, with your camera as you're using it, you want to always take your finger and run your finger across it. Make sure that it's smooth. Make sure that you don't have any chips on that paint. Because here's what happens. The pressure plate is between... is sandwiches the film this is the film the pressure plate and the opening the shutter all right it keeps pressure on the film to keep it flat because you don't want your flat your film right you don't want your film to get bowed right because then it'll be sharp and then it'll be out of focus no 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 pressure plate keeps pressure on the film to keep it flat while it's being exposed and then as you advance the film, right, the film runs along the pressure plate. There's always pressure being applied to the film by the pressure plate. So the reason I pay so much attention to it, and I always say check it, clean it, keep it clean, is because as you advance the film, right, there's pressure on it. If you don't keep it clean and there's a piece of grit, it's going to scratch every single frame. All right? So that's why I always point out the pressure plate. Another email came in. Oh, have you ever asked for a partial refund on a camera or camera equipment? Yes. Um, sometimes a seller just doesn't point out a problem. He doesn't by either by choice or just by he just didn't point that out because he didn't realize it was a problem um, for example I purchased the camera and when I took the lens off the camera in the light box the light box you know the felt on either side of the mirror it was peeling away it was deteriorated and it was exposing the white metal right now that's no good because light will get in there and it'll reflect it all around I knew I could fix it but I took a photograph of the damaged area that he didn't point out I sent him an email contact seller I said look this is a problem it has to be repaired what would you like to do and he immediately most sellers Immediately we'll say, Ugh, I'm sorry, can I send you a $5 refund, partial refund, $10, partial refund, $20, partial refund. And I go, okay, now I accept it because I can fix it. That was fixed in about 10 minutes. Took the lens off, you see the problem, you get a sharp, a sharpie, uh, a scalpel, you finish cutting away the bad felt, Till it's so you cut away till where it's glued properly, clean it out, dust it out, and I used the bottle of black liquid electrical tape, and you just coat it, coat it nice and thin, let it dry overnight, another coat, paint it, paint it on, let it dry overnight, three coats, it dries flat black matte, perfect, looks perfect. Okay, so. That's one example. I've done, I've done quite a few. Um, I've received quite a few partial refunds on equipment uh, for various things. Um, buy a strobe, right? You buy a Nikon uh, flash, and uh, the battery compartment has some green, obvious leakage from batteries over the years, right? Now I know I can clean it, right? You scrape it. You use a pencil eraser. Okay, you clean it, it takes time. 
and you can clean it. But I took a photograph before I cleaned it, sent the, sent the photo to the seller. I said, you didn't point this out. This is a problem. I have to fix it or I have to, or I have to send it out to get it fixed. What do you want to do? Once again, they said, can I send you 10 bucks? 15, 12, 7. Yeah. All right. Partial refund. All right. So that's why another reason why it's always good to use, to buy from a seller that has 100%. They don't want a problem. They will take care of a problem. Why? They want to hold on to that 100% positive feedback. They cherish it. Okay. Let's keep going. Another question. You keep recommending Sekonic light meters. Which model should I get? Okay. Wow. Good question. I I have, a, I use now after all these years, I've upgraded all the way to the Sekonic digital spot meter. All right. It's, I bought it used on eBay. It was 325 used. That's what I use. I'm not. I'm not just starting off. I've graduated to that. Now, two Sekonic light meters that I have owned and recommend. All right, there's two. The first one I just checked the prices today uh, on eBay. Use use prices where I recommend you get your camera equipment uh, is the Sekonic L, like Larry, two zero eight. All right, Sekonic light meter, L208, Sekonic light meter. Currently in very good condition from a seller with 100%. Today they're going for $85 with $425 shipping and handling. Now, the L208 is about that big. It's a needle light meter, but this is why this is one is sweet. It slips into the top of your camera into the hot shoe or the cold shoe where the flash would go. So it's always there. You just press the button, the needle goes to a certain spot, and when you let go of the button, it locks the needle in. And then you turn the dial where there's another meter, and you just match the needle, and then you look down at the ring, and it says, for this ASA or ISO film speed, you have all these choices of exposure. 125 at f8 60 at f11 and so on okay simple to use it uses a flat cell battery accurate wonderful light meter i've compared it to the 300 dollar sekonic light meter dead on dead accurate all right tiny goes into the hot shoe you don't have to keep it on the hot shoe it comes with a lanyard you wear it around your neck keep it in your pocket but it's about uh, about the size of uh, it's about the size of a book of matches, right? Thicker, of course, but it's but that's it, tiny. That's going for eighty five dollars uh, on eBay used, plus four and a quarter shipping. Now something a little bit better, like the next step up, would be the Sekonic L, like Larry, three oh eight. The L three oh eight, Flashmate. Right, currently is going for 105 plus 30 shipping. It's coming from Japan. Okay, um, this is wonderful. It's all digital, and it's not only good for regular light meter readings, but you can hold it in front of your subject, fire your flash, and it'll tell you what setting to use for your flash it's wonderful all right so you have a choice 85 plus shipping or 105 plus shipping all right 85 to 105 it's not that much of a difference i would go with the l308 flash mate now remember these two sekonic meters light meters that i mentioned you buy them it's just like buying stocks or bonds you're just parking your money into the light meter. And when you want to upgrade, you sell it. And Sekonic has such a great historical quality and resell value. So you get your money back. 
used. You bought it used, you're going to sell it used, just take care of it. Don't get it scratched. I think both of these, the L208 and the L308 that are on eBay today, right, have the little leather pouch, vinyl pouch. Keep it in there. Keep it in there and put it in your pocket. Keep it from getting scratched from your keys or whatever. Okay? Um, and how do I know they're accurate, these these meters from Sekonic? Because you test one against the other. You test one against two others. You test the meter against the light meter in your camera. You know, if you have, let's say, say for argument's sake, you have a, a D3, Nikon D3 digital camera, right? It'll show you it has the a meter built in. There you go. Accurate. But for your film cameras that um, or, or digital cameras that you want a, a separate light meter, go with the Sekonic. For that price today, 105 plus 30 shipping, right? It's a total of $135. I would get the Sekonic L308 Flashmate. It's a little bit bigger. It's almost the size of a cell phone. Smaller, but it's almost the size of a cell phone. It's got some size to it. Okay. Incident and reflective light metering. Plus, it's got flash measurement also. Okay. Uh, next question. Let's move on. Uh, the seller on eBay, his ad says, this seller does not accept returns. Don't worry about it. That could be on there all day long. eBay's policy, if there's something wrong with the camera that the guy didn't point out, you can return it. Return guaranteed. So, that's bogus. I don't know why they, why eBay still lets the sellers put that on there. This seller does not accept returns. It's probably just to, uh, you know, scare you away from returning it because if you if you return it and the money goes back to you, eBay's out too. Maybe that's why. Okay. Who next question? What is another option for buying gear other than eBay? All right. Well. You got this uh, couple of things, all right? I go to eBay for 99% of all my film camera purchases, all right? Because I've tried other online camera stores for used film cameras, and they might grade something as good. It's not good. Is usually poor. All right. So I found that this independent mom and pop kid, whatever, selling their film camera on eBay is much better, much more accurate description, fairer prices than online stores for film cameras. Now, digital cameras, that's another story. Digital cameras, now, I am not affiliated with this website that I'm going to mention. I pay cash, whatever, for all my purchases from this website that I'm going to mention. I have never been thrown a bone. They don't even know who the hell I am other than I've made purchases from them. Okay? Uh, for digital cameras, DSLRs or mirrorless cameras, cameras. I get them from mpb.com. M like Mary, P like Peter, and B like Bob. mpb.com. Uh, there's a, uh, I know they're in, I know they're in Europe, they're in England, but they have a Brooklyn distribution uh, warehouse. So, I'm in New York. It takes like one or two days to get here. All right. Here's why MPB, MPB.com is light years ahead of everyone else, every other online store or eBay. They have, it's consistent through the years. I've been buying from them for years. 
they have a corporate mantra which is if this camera is in excellent condition excellent condition we're going to sell it as good in other words they feel that the consumer you and me have a very high higher expectation of what we're what we what we're paying for what we're getting so what they do is uh, it's 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 remarkable they downplay um, the quality of what they sell the prices they they usually have let's say you want to buy an icon d4 today you go online they might have seven and they have all seven might have seven different prices and they list all the shutter counts and they point out all the scratches dents whatever and if you look at it and you go wow they rated this as good or very good and you're like wow the shutter count is 8,000 8,000 clicks on a D4 that's nothing but the price is so low and you're looking at it and you get the body and you get a battery and you get a charger I mean it might be half the market battery and charger who cares you're looking at it you go wow I'm going to take a chance and then it comes and you look at it and you're like this camera is like new forget about excellent forget about very good forget about good this is in the excellent mint category so I don't know if I'm making myself clear they have a reverse um, mantra than every other store they know they have good quality stuff but they also know that the consumer like you and me I don't know it's like let the consumer be so thrilled with this camera they thought they were buying a good camera a good rated good camera we're gonna send them an excellent camera Wow Wow what a corporate business mo model and it worked I have directed colleagues of mine who need another body digital digital body or lens or flash or tripod to go to MPB I don't know what MPB stands for Mary Paul boy dot com all right that was a good question see that's something else I wouldn't have thought of mentioning I must have said eBay a thousand times so far all right this one threw me for a loop this question I don't know you know when you first that's why I have comments turned off because you don't know if somebody's being sarcastic or if they just legitimately uh, want to know so this is this is the question I didn't I didn't have to mention this but I will this uh, member member this viewer says uh, to me in an email how much photography schooling did you say you had question mark how much photography schooling did you say you had all right so I did some math all right start off with 600 hours of in classroom photography training 600 hours all right an hour a day every day for five years right plus another 600 hours of darkroom training schooling in the darkroom with including practice and helping other students as as a uh, role model right as a student teacher so now we're up to 1200 hours next in high school when you are in the photography class you get to join after a year or two the photography club right 
which is a smaller group of people who are more interested in photography. And that photography club are given assignments from the photography teacher. The photography teacher gets requests from all the other departments, from the athletic department, from the art department, from the music department. Okay? This is what I mean. I got another 200 hours of school photography photojournalist shooting plays music assemblies group photos such as the spanish club the art club the football team jv varsity all right being assigned an actual assignment sheet going to football games right especially here in new york the thanksgiving game the rivalry between certain high schools in the 70s was it, it, it matches uh, the NFL, I swear to God. Um, so what you don't realize, you're a kid, right? You're a teenager. You get an assignment. You go. You shoot it. You develop your prints. You make a contact sheet, right, with all the negatives. And then your photography teacher circles the one or two, the best. He says, all right, give me an 8 by 10 of those. You go, you make an 8 by 10 you give it to him. He sends it to the head of that department, like the athletic department, let's say, if it was a football game. And before you know it, at the end of the year, your photos are in the yearbook. You're like, wow, they used my photo in the yearbook. In the yearbook, you're like, wow, you're so excited, especially if they gave you photo credit. Photo by commenter. So what you don't realize, but the school realizes, they have a resource, photographer students, they get the best people that want to join the photography club or squad. And they will shoot these individual uh, events. And they don't have the school doesn't have to hire an outside company photographer to come and shoot it and charge them up the nose. So it works hand in hand. The photographer, us, we're getting experience. And of course, the film they give it to you for free if you're going to shoot it for the school right the dark room is available for free the paper the chemicals for free because you're, you're shooting for them so that was another 200 hours of photo photojournalist um experience okay but here's something i i mentioned i think maybe once i calculated it was another, another 432 hours of school training by I was a student of SMP the School of Modern Photography back in the 70s what it was the School of Modern Photography was a home correspondence photography school now if you guys I don't think they have any correspondence schools I guess the closest they would have now is when you go to college online. I guess that's about the same as correspondence school. But what the School of Modern Photography was, of course you pay, right? You pay monthly. And you get an assignment, book, a teaching guide by the, in the mail. And it's a course similar to this, where it takes you by the hand, Photography 101, and then you get your first assignment uh, I think the example I used was um, go take photographs of people at work or uh, take photographs take landscape photographs whatever it was it's different every week you would shoot the photos develop the film print the film or at minimum a contact sheet put it in the envelope that they would give you mail it back it was in New Jersey I think then the next week you would get that back the envelope back you get all your stuff back. They don't want your negatives, right? You'd get that back. And your, te your, your teacher, your professor, would have his notes, handwritten notes. Uh, I, I looked, I viewed your photographs. You'll, and he would use a, um, a red grease pencil, a marker, right, on your contact sheet. And he would say, this is a great frame. Um, unfortunately, you took it, you didn't have it, you didn't have your camera straight. Or in this picture, you jerked. Right, there was movement on your end. Um, this one, you, it was out of focus. This one, 
you have a pole coming out of the back of the guy's head. This one, you have a wire going between, like, coming out of his ears. And this went on for years. And uh, somewhere in the attic, I have, you know, certificates of achievement from them. And so, anyway, the question was, and probably you probably lost track of what the hell the question was. How much photography schooling did you say you had? Question mark. So I added it up, and it came out to, I was surprised. 1,832 hours of formal photography training. 1,832 hours of formal photography training. Plus the last 48 years of experience. So we went 25 minutes. Uh, this this episode, Volume 8, was q and I'll do these every so often when I get, you know, five or six emails with some good questions of course there were a lot of other emails you know congratulations on your on your youtube channel good luck papa i appreciate all those guys i mean it it's beautiful um so i think that's all the emails i wanted to go through okay uh thank you for joining today um i think we did enough right almost a half an hour I just want to say, guys, if you want to contact me, my email, blackandwhitephoto at AOL.com. My website with all of my photographs for the last, I don't know how many years, it's not 48 years worth of photos. Um, it's www. My daughter keeps saying you don't have to say www anymore. I don't know. It's carmitaverna.com. It's one of these websites where I don't want ads. I don't sell anything. I don't sell a t-shirt, a mug. No. In this community of photographers, um, with all the, I'm going to call it with the other, with some uh, podcasts I listen to, the Pandy Whamby, right? With that going on. Thank God for the internet. Where you can tune in and you can learn. Even if it's just for entertainment. You tune in. You listen to a guy tell you about photography. I love photography. And that's it. That's the bottom line. I've been photographing for 48 years. And I know that most of you feel the same way. All right, so thank you again. Have a great day. It's raining like cats and dogs here in New York today. Every two minutes on my phone, I get a flood advisory. All right, have a great evening, great night. And like I always say, if you can't sleep, put this video on. I might put you to sleep. Take it easy.